Axel linear algebra done right. Chapter 1b solutions. First question, prove that minus negative v is equal to v for every vector v in a vector space. So the first way I did this is to say that v plus minus negative v is equal to v plus, and I pulled out both of the minus ones, and then we use the distributive property to say that it's one plus minus one times minus one. But in this section of the brackets, remember those ones and minus ones come from the field of scalars. So it's okay to say, well, that's equal to two v. Now, when you add the added inverse of v to both sides, you get this equation, and then the v and the minus v cancels. So you get minus negative v is equal to v. And the reason why you can go ahead and say add the additive inverse of v is because v comes from a vector space. So you know that v must have an additive inverse. Another way to do this question is to observe that minus negative v is the additive inverse of minus v. So we know that that means this is equal to zero. And we know that v plus minus v is equal to zero. So what does that tell us? It tells us that both of these elements are additive inverses of minus v. And since the additive inverse is unique, it must be that v is equal to minus negative v. Question two, suppose a is in a field and v is in a vector space and a v is equal to zero, prove that a is equal to zero or v is equal to zero. Well, if the scalar is zero, we're done because zero times any vector will give you the zero vector. But we want to know about the case where a is not equal to zero. We know that since a is in a field, then a must have a multiplicative inverse. And that inverse is such that a inverse times a is equal to one. So using this, we have a inverse times a v is equal to zero. So we use associativity and we eventually get down to v being zero. Question three, suppose v and w are in a vector space. Explain why there exists a unique x in that vector space satisfying satisfying the equation v plus 3x equal w. Simple rearrangement of the equation will give us x is equal to a third of w minus v. But we really want to know whether this is unique or not. So we'll assume that there are two, so an x and an x prime, and see if they end up being equal. It turns out they are, because 3x prime, if x prime is such an alternative, is equal to w minus v. So 3x prime minus 3x, where x is this up here, will give us w minus v minus itself, which is equal to zero. But if three times x prime minus x is zero, then x prime minus x must be zero. So x prime is equal to x. And therefore, this x equals a third w minus v is unique. Question four, the empty set is not a vector space. It fails to satisfy only one of the requirements that listed in the definition. Which one? Well, any vector space must have an additive identity, which means it must have at least one element. So automatically, the empty set cannot satisfy. Question five, show that in the definition of a vector space, the additive inverse condition can be replaced by the condition that zero V is equal to zero for all vectors V. So zero V is the same thing as one plus negative one times V. And using the distributive property, we get down to V plus negative V is equal to zero. So this means that negative V can be found for any such vector V and it is unique. So the additive inverse existence property is satisfied. Satisfied. Question six, let minus infinity and infinity denote two distinct objects, neither of which is an R. And we define a new set, which is the union. So we take the real numbers and union it with two extra elements, namely positive and negative infinity. And we want to know if that is a vector space under these operations. So most of these operations make sense when you look at them. A scalar times infinity is minus infinity if it, the scalar is less than zero. It's zero if t is zero and it's infinity if t is greater than zero. And similarly for t times minus infinity. Also we have some addition rules. t plus infinity is equal to infinity. Infinity plus itself is infinity and infinity plus minus infinity is zero. Now all of these together are very tricky. They can look like they satisfy all the conditions of a vector space, but actually they don't. Because if you observe the distributive property, take infinity by itself and five as a scalar, then five times infinity 
infinity is infinity, but 5 is the same thing as 3 minus 2. And if you split it up using the distributive property, then by the rules from before, 3 infinity plus minus 2 times infinity should be infinity minus itself, which is 0. But what that gives you is infinity is equal to 0. But that doesn't seem like it'll make sense because the additive identity should be unique if this really is a vector space. So therefore it isn't. And if you test it out, you get that it doesn't make sense because 5 is 5 plus infinity. But if infinity is 0, that's the same thing as 5 plus 0, which gives us infinity equals 0, which is not good for a vector space.